A differential equation is one that's just an equation with uh, a derivative in it. Um, the simplest one that we have is dy over dt equals some constant um, k e raise kt. Um, there is only one solution to this particular differential equation. So y of t would be equal to e raised kt. Well, k, of course, we could put a constant in it. Um, and, and how do we know that y of t equals e raised kt is a solution? Well, we all know the way to test an equation is to take the solution and put it back in the equation to see if it works out. So I have come up with a solution, which is y of t e raised kt. So if I took the derivative by plugging my solution in there, I know the derivative of e raised kt is k e raised kt. So that is a solution. Now, <clears throat> just by looking at the value of k, one can identify if we have a growth function or if we have a decay function. So we consider a function f of t equals e raise kt. And if k is greater than zero, in the sense that it's positive, then f of t is an exponential growth function. Likewise, if k is less than zero, then f of t is an exponential decay function. So depending on the value of k, one can identify if an exponential function is in fact a growth function or if it is a decay function. So for example, f of t equals e raise to t would imply an exponential growth function whereas f of t equals e raised minus 2t would imply an exponential decay function. So, in general, an exponential growth function is defined as f of t equals some constant multiply by e raise kt, where k is greater than zero, c is the initial value, in other words, that is f of zero, and an exponential decay function
is defined in a similar manner. But k is less than zero. The value k is called the rate parameter. Of importance is the doubling time and half-life period um, with exponential growth functions the time when the initial value C is doubled is called the doubling time and with decay functions When the top, when the initial value is halved, it's called the half life period. But regardless of the case, both the doubling time and the half-life period have the same formula. So, and that is simply t equals ln of 2 divided by k. The only difference is if we look at a doubling time, then t is, if, if we look at a growth function, then t is ln of 2 divided by k. That would be the doubling time. If you're looking at a decay function, then t equals ln of 2 over k would be the half-life period. Regardless of the case, we need to know the value k, in other words, the rate parameter. So here is an example where we want to find the half-life of the radioactive material for which 99.57% of the initial amount remains after one year. So we do not know the rate parameter, but we do know um, the amount A of T would be equal to A naught E raise KT um, as the exponential model. And at time T equals zero, um, we had some initial amount, and after one year, A of C became 0.9957 of the initial amount that we had. In other words, 99.57% of A0. So that would mean 0.9957 a naught would equal to A naught E raise KT. The A naughts would go away and T here would become 1. So 0.9957 would simply be e equal to E raise K. And that is an exponential equation and we solve the exponential equation by taking natural logarithm on both sides. So ln of 0.9957 would equal to ln e raise k, which would imply k is ln of 0.9957. We can use a calculator to find that value. <clears throat> 
So ln of point nine nine five seven is negative zero point zero zero four three one. As expected, k is negative because we are talking about decay, so k has to be negative. So now that we have the value of k, we could find the half-life period. So t half is the half-life period. Or we could also write it as A0 divided by 2 in the sense that initial value divided by 2 is ln of 2 divided by k, which would simply be ln As you might notice that I simply used uh, the magnitude of k and I ignored the sign because we know time cannot be negative. So in 160.82 years, the initial amount would be exactly half, um, exactly half. Here is an example on another exponential model. So um, what we have is the cumulative sales over time. And S is equal to 50 times 1 minus E raised KT. And during the first year, 8,000 units were sold. And we've got to be careful here because we are talking about thousands of units this would imply um, during the first year, S of 1 is simply 8, not 8,000. So we would have 8 divided by 50 is equal to 1 minus E raised K times 1, which is simply K. 8 divided by 50 is 0.16. And 0.16 would be equal to 1 minus e raised k, which would imply negative 0.84 equals negative e raised k. The negatives would get cancelled. This would imply 0.84 is equal to e raised k. And that is an exponential equation, so you take logarithm on both sides. The ln and the e would get cancelled, so so k would be equal to ln of point eight four. which would give us negative 0.1743. And naturally, this is a decay problem um, because the rate is negative. So the rate parameter is negative 0.1743. We would want to find the saturation point, which is simply um, the limit of S as T approaches infinity. So we have limit T approaches infinity 50 times 1 minus E raised negative 0.1743 T. So that would equal to 50 minus limit T approaches infinity E raised negative 0.1743 T. Note the exponential is a decay function, so as time increases, it is going to become zero. So that would result 
in just 50 minus 0, which is 50. So it is 50,000 units. And we would want to see the number of units that we would have after five years. So S of 5 would be 50 times 1 minus E raised 5 times negative 0.1743. So 1 minus e raised 5 times negative 0.1743 multiplied by 50, get 29.08, which is 29,080 units. You've got to be very, very careful in this particular problem because even though the rate is negative, which indicates decay, the model itself is not a decay model. Um, it's rather than a gross model. The reason being we start at 8,000 units and we reach a maximum of 50,000 units. So it is actually growing. But beyond a certain point, it is not going to grow past 50,000, which is why we call it the saturation point. Um, it's not going to go past 50,000 units. Here is a growth model. Um, the number of a certain type of bacteria increases continuously as a rate proportional to the number present. So we start with 150 bacteria at given time and 450 bacteria five hours later. And we'd like to know the amount of bacteria after 10 hours. So the model here is A of T is equal to the initial amount multiplied by E raised KT. The initial amount is 150. So what we have is A of T is 150 E raised KT. We do not know the value of K, but we can find the value of K using the information that's provided here. After five hours, we have 450 bacteria, um, which would mean A of 5 is 450. That is given to us. So that would simply imply 450 is equal to 150 E raised K multiplied by 5 which would mean 3 is equal to e raised 5k. And that is an exponential equation. So we take logarithm on both sides. Which would imply k is ln of 3 divided by 5. And of course, it is positive because it is a growth model. So our model ends up being A of T is equal to A naught, the initial amount 150, multiplied by E raised point 2197T. The question would like to know the number of bacteria that will be present after 10 hours. So A of 10 is 150 e raised point 0.2197 multiplied by 10. Which would be 1300, oh, 1349.696. I could round it to 1350 bacteria. How long will it take for um, the bacterial population to double? As I noted earlier, that may be a decay function or a growth function. The doubling time um, or the half-life period takes on the same formula. So T to A naught, twice the initial amount, is ln of 2 
divided by k. So ln of 2 divided by 0 0.2197. we get to 3.1549. So in about 3.155 hours, the amount of bacteria would double. Which makes sense because the amount of bacteria tripled from 150 to 450 in a matter of um, five hours. So the doubling time has to be less than five hours and we end up getting 3.1549 hours. Here we have um, a course problem. So we have a new SUV that has a book value of 20,856 after three years. We want to find a linear model for the value of the vehicle. The way we could go about this problem is to look at time t, initial t equals zero, the value was 33,000 and three years later it became 20,856. So we have two points. We could use the point slope formula to find the slope. Um, so y minus y1 is equal to m times t minus t1 because the value depends on the time t. We'd like to find the slope. The slope m is y2 minus y1 divided by t2 minus t1 which in our case be 20,856 minus 33,000 divided by 3 minus 0 negative 4048. The slope is negative, indicating that we have a decreasing line, that the price is decreasing. So now I could go back to the point slope form that I wrote earlier. So y minus y1, which is 33,000, would equal to negative 4048 multiplied by t minus zero, which is the first time point, second time point. So we would end up having y equals 33,000 plus 4,048, excuse me, minus 4,048 t. And that is the linear model. The exponential model is a of t equals a naught e raised kt um, after three years the value of the vehicle is 20,856 so 20,856 would equal to the initial amount of 33,000 multiplied by e raised k times 3. So 20,856 divided by 33,000 is 0.632. So that is a, an exponential equation, and we find a solution by taking logarithm on both sides.
divide that by 3 to get k. k happens to be negative 0.1529. Now, in the previous part, the slope was negative, indicating a decreasing line. Here, the rate is negative, indicating an exponential decay. So the model is the initial amount, 30,000. Multiplied by e raised minus 0.1529t. Now we have to find the book value of the vehicle after one year and four years using each model. So the time is one and four. First we have the linear model, then we have the exponential model. So when t is equal to one, we have 33,000 minus 4,048 multiplied by 1, which is 28,952. And for four years, we would do 33,000 minus 4,048 multiplied by 4. That gives us 16,808. Now, that is the linear model. For the exponential model, we have 30,000 e raised negative 0.1529 multiplied by time 1. We have 25,746.47. And when time is equal to 4, we have 16,000. 274.466. I'm just double checking my work. Ah. That is 13,808, not 16,000. I'd like to double check the exponential also. That's not a problem. So even though, um, we have an exponential model and a linear model. The linear model decays at a rapid rate, or in four years, it loses a lot of value compared to the exponential one, because the rate, is, the rate of decay is not as large. Um, it's a very small value, and it is decaying at the rate of negative 0.1529. So here is a problem on cumulative sales. Um, that is based on an exponential model. So what we have is S equals C e raised K over T. There are bits of information that we know. When T is equal to 1, the sales S is 5,000. So in thousands of units, it's just 5. So 5 would equal to e raised k over 1, which is k. As t approaches infinity, the saturation point, which is limit, t approaches infinity, s of t is 30,000. So that would imply 30, c, e raised k over t, so since we are taking limit t approaches infinity, e raised k over t, 
The denominator in k over t is getting significantly large. So eventually um, it would reach a maximum of one um, because one divided by infinity would be zero. So we'd end up getting um, one. So c would be equal to 30. So we have 30 for c. So 5 equals 30 e raised um, k, which is the first equation here. So I'm taking c equals 30, plugging it in that equation. So 5 over 30 would be equal to e raised k, which would imply e raised k is 1 over 6. And that is an exponential equation, and we can solve it by taking logarithm on both sides. <clears throat> so ln of e raised k would equal to ln of 1 over 6, which would mean k is ln of 1 over 6. which is negative 1.7918. So we have a model. So S of T is equal to the constant C, 30, E raised K, negative 1.792, divided by T. We'd like to know the number of units that would be sold after five years. So that would mean T equals five. S of 5 would be equal to 30, e raised negative 1.792 divided by 5. So we would have 30 multiplied by e raised negative 1.792 divided by 5. And we end up getting 20.9638. And if it's in thousands of units, that would become... 20 point or 20,963.8 units, so approximately 20,964 units. You've got to be careful here because of the nature of the model, even though the typical rate parameter is negative, this particular model is not a decay model, it's a growth model, and it's going to start at an initial value of um, or the year of, um, one, it is started value of 5,000, but eventually it is going to reach a saturation point of 30,000 as T approaches infinity. But do keep in mind, um, it is not going to exceed 30,000 units, as that would be the saturation point.